UTPA men's basketball, women's basketball, and volleyball unveiled nine recruits. The coaches tell us all about them. Men's basketball picks up a big road win, and after a successful bone marrow drive last year, the Bronx set the bar even higher. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The NCAA shortened the early signing period from two weeks to one week this year, but that didn't stop a number of student athletes from signing national letters of intent and committing to UTPA. We start with men's basketball, with six new recruits joining the squad, including 6'9 forward Andreas Bigham, 6'5 forward Abrian Edwards, 6'4 guard Brian Long, 6'9 forward Dan Manzi, 6'2 guard Dion Sidney, and 6'6 forward Talon Whitaker. Right off the bat, you see three of the four high school student athletes coming in are from Texas. It's a mixture of youth and experience as the four freshmen are joined by a pair of junior college transfers. Coach Hipcher, your thoughts? Well, we couldn't be happier. You know, we had uh, nine kids visit campus and hit on six of them and uh, filled the positions that we felt we needed to fill and uh, extremely excited about the group. Uh, helped us both in size, athleticism, and we think in, uh, in levels of skill also. A 6'9", 218-pound forward from Copenhagen, Denmark, Andreas Bigham comes to the Bronx with two seasons of eligibility remaining from Northwest College, where he is averaging 11 points, three boards, and two helpers per game. Bigham has experience at the international level, having played with the Denmark junior national team, and he's been invited to play with the senior team this coming summer. Andreas, a uh, highly skilled 6'9 kid, can play anywhere from a three to the five. Uh, <clears throat> grew up in Denmark, uh, went to high school out in Kansas, and now is in junior college out in Wyoming. But uh, again, really excited. He's very, very athletic, can run the floor, jump, and highly skilled on the perimeter. So uh, should be a great addition to our motion offense. A 6'5 wing from Pflugerville High School, Abrian Edwards is ranked in the top 20 by TexasRoundBall.com and the Texas Top 100 by TexasHoops.com. Another Texas kid, and you know, that, that's a neat thing for us. That's three Texas kids, and we haven't made a, a dent in Texas in the past, and we're trying to do it now, but Abrian is uh, from Pflugerville, uh, right above Austin. 6'5, uh, physical guard, can play any wing spot, can guard anywhere from one to three and uh, a winner. Uh, again, played on a great AAU team, uh, the two one O's, uh, Jayhawks, and really uh, we think he's a, a great addition for you. Extremely athletic and extremely competitive. A three-time All-District honoree at Killeen High School, the 6'4 Brian Long is ranked among the Texas Top 100 by TexasHoops.com and was a preseason All-Area honoree and MVP candidate. Long plays his AAU basketball for the Danny Granger D1 Ambassadors in New Mexico. Brian Long, uh, his father uh, works at uh, Fort Hood up in Colleen. Uh, tough kid, well-raised, good academician, and uh, very physical guard. Uh, can get to the rim, uh, drive it, make shots. Uh, played on a great AAU team this summer. And uh, we look for great things from Brian. I mean, he's uh, got superior leadership skills. A 6'9", 230-pound native of Kigali City, Rwanda, Dan Manzi arrived in the United States to attend Tampa Bay Christian Academy in 2011. He averaged 22 points and 8 rebounds per game as a junior, a three-star recruit and one of the top 20 players in the state of Florida. At one time, Manzi was ranked in the ESPN Top 100, all of which make him one of the most decorated recruits in program history. Uh, Dan Manzi is originally from Rwanda. Uh, he's uh, born just after the genocide there. Uh, and came over here and attended high school the last three years in Florida. A great kid, engineering student, uh, coming in here to, to, to really try to make an impact on this program, get an engineering degree and make an impact on Rwanda when he goes home. But uh, top 100 kid most of the summer, uh, highly recruited, a great steal for us and a great addition and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully a keystone for the program uh, to make a turnaround. But, 
uh, as good a person as he is a player and uh, 6'9 with inside outside skills and a great future. Rated one of the top 10 Houston area senior point cards by Jim Hicks and RCS Sports. The 6'2 Dion Sidney comes to the Bronx from Westfield High School in spring. Uh, Dion is another Texas kid, uh, again uh, from Spring, Texas. Uh, combo guard, can score the ball but play the point. And uh, again, competitive kid, great student and uh, plays in a great program up in spring and you know again a great addition for us a, a guard with size and, and length and ranginess much like Brian and uh, a kid that we feel has a great future. The 6'6", 230 pound Talon Whitaker comes to the Bronx from Garden City Community College where he's averaging 12 points and 7 rebounds per game this season. According to the Jerry Mullen Scouting Service, Whitaker is one of the top 200 players in junior college. Talon Whitaker is from uh, Denver, playing out in Gardens of City, Kansas. Elwin's known him since he was a junior in high school, and we really feel that uh, he's one of those intangibles guys. He's uh, a little bit like Justin Leathers in some ways. He does all the dirty work, does all the tough things, and scores it inside. Uh, he's one of those guys every night in junior college, his college coach, I mean, you know, he's a double-double guy. And uh, again, mature, good people, and uh, going to do a great job for us. On to women's basketball, with one new recruit joining the squad, 6'3 center Laura Van Tilburg of Westlaco, just a few minutes down the road from the UTPA campus. Van Tilburg is off to a great start this season and has already earned MVP honors at an in-season tournament. As a junior, Van Tilburg was the district's 31-5A Offensive Player of the Year and an All-Valley second team selection after averaging 17.5 points, 14 rebounds, 4 blocks, and 3 steals per game. Westlaco won 37 games and reached the regional semifinals. We're very excited to have Laura because she brings something to the table for us that uh, I think is very important. She'll be a definite inside presence and a, a definite factor as, as we're trying to build UTPA into a program that is going to contend for WAC championships. The Bronx have three local student athletes on the squad this year, all of whom were brought aboard by Tidwell. So it's no surprise to see him recruiting hard in the Rio Grande Valley. She can play. Uh, she is a very good athlete. She can run. You know, she's coming back off of ACL surgery. She's playing extremely well for Coach Fino. She's a presence inside. And the thing I love about her, she finishes at the rim, but she can run. And as she continues to grow and, and, and get stronger and get that leg back to where it's exactly where she wants it, you know, she is a big time player. We're very fortunate to, uh, to get her at UTPA as we begin this pro uh, process of, of building this program and timing is everything. And so the time is right. We worked it out. Her parents are very supportive of us and she is certainly excited about being, uh, being a part of the UTPA women's basketball program. It's a great, great match for everybody. And finally, we take a look at volleyball with two new recruits joining the squad, including setter Mary Kate Clark and outside hitter Kiara Hill. Mary Kate Clark comes to the Bronx from Wakahachi High School, where she led her team to the number 23 state ranking, a 38 and 7 record, and the UIL regional semifinals as a senior after averaging five assists per set and earning District 15 4 a Setter of the Year honors. Clark earned all tournament team honors at the 2013 Northwest ISD Volleyball Classic and was a first team all district selection as a junior. Mary Kate is someone who, you know, comes out of the Dallas area, which is high level volleyball uh, all the way around club, high school, all of it. And, uh, you know, so she's played against good teams. She's played with a good team. She's someone who stood out to me as, you know, just someone who ran the type of offense that we really have been have been striving for. You know, she she can deliver a nice fast tempo on the ball, uh, can slow it down if necessary. But uh, you know, we want to go a little bit faster. We're going to have to, you know, do that being the the size that we are. You know, we're not the biggest team in, in the WAC, and uh, you know, you look at Bakersfield this year, and they were a team that was a little undersized. But the the faster they went, the more successful they were, and you know, that's really where we've been trying to go over the last couple of years. And and she's really the setter that I think can really take us that next step. And so, you know, I'm really excited to get her in here. She's a, a probable six rotation player, you know, 5'10". She can put up a decent sized block. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see if she, if she ends up in a 5'1", 6'2". There's, there's all sorts of options out there for us. Kiara Hill comes from Sierra Canyon High School in Chatsworth, California, where she was on the AFCA All-American Under Armour watch list as a senior. 
He was also the Crescenta Valley Tournament MVP. As a junior, he'll earn Team MVP, First Team All CIF, First Team All Alpha League, Los Angeles Daily News Junior Watch, and AFCA Phenom Honors. Hill was ranked number 79 among sophomores by PrepVolleyball.com while earning First Team All CIF, First Team All Delta League, and Los Angeles Daily News All Area Team Honors. Hill will also earn First Team All CIF and Second Team All Delta League Honors as a freshman. Akira Hill out of the Los Angeles area is going to be uh, an impact hitter for us. She's going to be someone who you'll notice is, is very athletic, uh, maybe a little undersized, and, and that's where you know she kind of was still on on the radar for us. But uh, you know, jumps well, moves the ball around well. Thing that impressed me watching her through the club ranks was, you know, her ability to change her shots. You know, something didn't work, she moved that ball around, found another spot to score, and she did exactly that. She just kept scoring. Uh, she's got a great platform. You know, can jump in right away and, and give us some ball control. And then, uh, you know, she's got uh, some defensive awareness as well. So she was flying around the court, you know, making routine plays when she needed to make the routine plays and then, you know, made some spectacular ones to go along with it. So, you know, that's always good. She's got the full package and I I'm really excited to get her here. That's just your first taste of what's to come for the Bronx next year. We still have more newcomers to unveil, including a number of baseball and tennis student athletes. We'll I'll tell you about them during a future edition of Bronx Country. Now that we've told you about the incoming student athletes, the question is, how have the active ones been doing? Next on Bronx Country, highlights from the week that was in UTPA Athletics. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx Country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. After playing five games last week, a relatively light week for UTPA men's basketball, as they played just once, hitting the road to face UTSA. Bronx looking for their first win over UTSA since 2008, and their first win at UTSA since 2006. Bronx down six at the half, but in the second, the Bronx took over. Lori Toivonen with his career high third block of the game, and that sets up LJ McIntosh. For three, his fifth three-pointer and third of the half puts the Bronx up 41-33. About a minute later, the Bronx go-to guy is Javon Farrell. Makes it a 10-point Bronx advantage and caps a 17-2 run. The Roadrunners pulled to within seven, but Shaq Hines, having none of that, puts the Bronx up 51-41. The Bronx kept the lead in double figures the rest of the way. Going up as many as 17 on this Justin Leathers tip-in with two minutes left, Bronx win 70-55. McIntosh led all scorers with a career-high 17 points, 11 of which came in the first five and a half minutes of the second half. And McIntosh knows he couldn't have done it alone. My teammates were just getting me open, moving and spacing, and when they had, gave me the ball, I just had to do my job. Well, it was a good win. We didn't play real well the uh, first half, but came out, inspired the second half, and I think we won the second half by 20. We were down five at half, so we played very, very, uh, I thought, with a great purpose in the second half. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx right in the thick of things. New Mexico State off to a torrid start and now receiving votes in the AP poll. The Bronx in the midst of a three-game trip, taking them from Lamar to Bradley to SIU Edwardsville. As for UTPA women's basketball, back from eight days off to play twice in three days, hosting Texas Lutheran. Bulldogs kept it close early, but midway through the first half, the Bronx made their move. It started with a Sherelle Price jumper to put the Bronx up 10, followed by a Kaylin Boyd three, and then Jasmine Thompson took over. Her jumper makes it 23 to eight, then layups to make it 25 to eight and 29 to eight. 
Time winding down in the half, it's Thompson again. Makes it 43 to 20 Bronx. The Bronx took their largest lead of the season at 43 points on this Keanu Clark layup with two minutes left. Bronx roll, 80 to 37. Boyd led the Bronx with 12 points. Big game for Thompson, 10 points and seven boards in just 13 minutes, providing quite a spark off the bench. Uh, tonight's performance was amazing. Uh, my team actually came together. We all played together. We moved the ball, ball very well, and we got the win. 48 hours later, Virginia Commonwealth, that's right, VCU, made their first ever trek to the UTPA Fieldhouse. And early on, it was the Killer Bees. Kaylin Boyd for three, makes it five to nothing Bronx. Then Brittany Bush takes over inside, makes it seven to two. After back-to-back -back threes by the Rams, we're back to Bush. Bronx lead nine to eight. And then we're back to Boyd. Four three, 12 to eight Bronx. How about a little more Bush? Makes it 14-11. And then 16 to 15 Bronx. Rams score the next five, so the Bronx turn to Laquita Gardner. The senior captain brings the Bronx within one. And then Jasmine Thompson puts the Bronx ahead again. It's 21 to 20. Now the Rams close the first half on a 23 to eight run to go up 16. The Bronx undeterred. Tadisha Walker with the layup to start the second half. And then Boyd from downtown, not once, but twice. Cheryl Price hits the layup. Boyd scores again. And then Brianna Sifford hits the jumper. Kept a 15-0 run spanning eight minutes. Bronx within one. VCU pushed their lead back out to five, but the Bronx aren't done yet. Walker hits the jumper. Bush nails the basket. And then we're back to Sifford. Gives the Bronx a 48-47 lead. The Rams, however, respond with a 16-1 run en route to taking the game, 67-57. Boyd led the Bronx for the second straight game with 14 points. Big game for Bush with a career-high 12 points, six rebounds, three blocks, and one steal in just 12 minutes of action. We played extremely hard. We let our emotions get the best of us. Uh, you know, Brittany Bush getting in foul trouble. We had a couple of fouls that she should have never got. And then, you know, it's just part of the part of the makeup of the game, the way that the new rules and stuff are. But uh, we didn't play transition defense and we didn't block out on free throws, missed free throws, and that cost us about 10 points and that's a difference in the game. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx near the top, Grand Canyon and Idaho off the hot starts as well. The Bronx hit the road for the next five, starting this weekend at the UTSA Classic. UTPA Volleyball closing out the season against Bakersfield. Senior Nicole Masaki honored before the match. And early on, it was Masaki's match. Comes up with the ace to put the Bronx up two to nothing. A little later on, it's Masaki setting up Alicia Watson. Makes it five to one Bronx. The Bronx opened up the set on an eight to one run, but the Roadrunners came back. Casey Sanchez keeps it close here, making it 21-18, but the Roadrunners take the set 25-20. Second set, Roadrunners jumped out to a 7-1 lead, but here come the Bronx. Alicia Watson with the kill. Bronx within 7-5. Move ahead, Bronx down five, Maria Clefo. Gets the Bronx within 10-6. A few serves later, Haley Durham. Bronx pull within three, but the Roadrunners take the set, go up two to nothing. Now it's the third set, and the Bronx throwing a block party. Watson and Corinne Acuff make it two to nothing Bronx. Then Watson combines with Durham to make it four to two Bronx, but the Roadrunners come back to complete the three set sweep. Despite the result, a meaningful day for Misaki, whose first assist was the 2000th of her career. Misaki will graduate third all time in program history in assists and assists per set. Knowing that it was my last game, I just wanted to play hard and go all out, do my best for the team. Heck of a player. Uh, you know, a great setter, did a lot for this team, you know, we're certainly going to miss her going forward. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what she did for us, I'm proud of, you know, all her individual accomplishments. Uh, you know, I don't know, I'm kind of at a loss for words as far as, you know, what to say, what more to say about her. I mean, we've, we've talked to her, you know, two years now about the job that she's done for us and, uh, you know, she's certainly, it's much appreciated and it won't be forgotten. You know, I couldn't have done it without my team. It, it really wouldn't have happened without them, and I thank them for it all, and my coaches as well. The season may be over on the court for the Bronx, but that just means it's awards season. The WAC announced all conference teams on Sunday, and right side hitter Alicia Watson made the list for all freshman team. 
Watson ranked fourth among WAC freshmen in both kills and digs per set at nearly two each. She recorded all three of her double-doubles in WAC play, two of which led to wins for the Bronx. Coming up on this edition of Bronx Country, we take you to the Bronx baseball and women's basketball bone marrow drive. At long last, it finally arrived. Bronx baseball and women's basketball hosted a bone marrow drive and got 327 people to register. Alicia Diaz has the story. Many of time you can help save a life. It's a great thing to be able to help out uh, other people. Gives them an opportunity to do a good deed, you know, do something good with their day, start off the day on a good note. UTPA Baseball held its second annual bone marrow drive at the UTPA Library on November 19th with help from the women's basketball team. Students, athletes, and faculty came out to support the cause in hope of saving lives. So basically all we're doing today is just asking people to come out and register to be on a nationwide registry to help children and adults who have leukemia, sickle cell anemia, those types of blood cancers. They're in need of someone to match their same gene typing in order to donate marrow to them. The Bronx came together and asked potential donors to sign up for the Be The Match registry. So all we're asking is just for, for the, the student to fill out a form, rub the inside of their cheek with a cotton swab, and that places them onto a nationwide registry that says, you know what, I would be willing to come donate if I'm ever to be found a genetic match for someone that's in need. Coach Larry Tidwell and Manny Montrana think along the same lines as far as making sure the student athletes give back and understand the importance of it. Our players know that being part of our baseball program part of the UTPA uh, campus and university, it, it's a gift. And in return for that gift, they have to give back. Um, and what better way to give back than to, uh, than to save lives. The baseball and women's basketball team successfully signed up more than 300 members of the UTPA community this year and were honored to take part in such a humbling experience. For more information on how you can help, log on to BeTheMatch.org. For Bronx Country, I am Alicia Diaz. Help us save a lot. If you want to support the Bronx the way they're out there supporting the community, Donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Here's a look at what's coming up for the Bronx. Men's and women's basketball are on the road for a three-game road trip surrounding Thanksgiving. The men going from Lamar to Bradley to SIU Edwardsville, while the women play two at the UTSA Classic, before visiting former conference rival Houston Baptist on the way home. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... Go
commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference.